Hey guys, I just wanted to tell a little story about how I went from selling on Etsy in high school to selling full-time FBA and how I built a essentially a $36,000 business in sales um, over the course of two years after being um, a little Etsy crafter. So a lot of people don't know this about me, but I got my start on Etsy selling my handmade crafts. Um, and this is my shop. It's no longer active. But I actually sold clothesline kits that I made and the reason that I started selling these is because I was making them for myself and for family and friends of course and they liked them so much that I thought you know this may have an online market. So what I wound up doing was I was offering these clothesline kits for $12.99 plus $5 shipping. And so the customer is paying $17.99 for the kits and I'll just click on my sales here so you can see what a kit would have inside of it. Um, and so some of my best seller was this one right here, this like boho chick one. Um, and so this one sold several, I mean, uh, probably 40 or 50 times. And all it was was clothespins that I had decorated with scrapbook paper. And the biggest thing this taught me was I learned how to photograph products to sell because there were so many other clothespin sellers on Etsy that I was having to differentiate myself. And so in a kit, you got nine clothespins, two screws to hang it to the wall, and five foot of twine. And so I would say the cost for me to come up with the kit was probably around $2, and I was selling for around $17.99. So my main thing was time, because I would have to sit there and make these kits. And I was telling my mom I could make about two um, clothesline kits in one episode of Dexter. So do the math on that. But anyways, I started doing this when I was like a junior in high school, and what it was is it taught me how to do product photography, it taught me how to describe things. If, if you look at this, you can see the giant uh, little description of what it was, and then you could meet the owner of Hello Bella Creations, and I had my own little page. Um, but now I'm no longer active in this because it's just not enough money to, you know, to worry with. But obviously I've got a lot of great reviews on my products and I had a lot of, uh, a lot of time to play with it. Um, but I mean this is just an example of how you can get started doing something small and how it can become something huge. So overall I had um, 339 orders and I made four, $4,395. But what you have to consider is this was my first big venture outside of selling on eBay. This was something that I had made from scratch from uh, taking a physical product online and creating uh, essentially a business out of it. So, you know, I was very proud of that as a high school student that I had figured that out. And that sort of transitioned into, it gave me the confidence to start FBA. Because when I first started FBA, I was like, this sounds overly complicated. You mean I have to buy stuff and then ship it in and then label it and then, you know, manage it while it's at this warehouse. It just sounded so foreign to me, but I wanted to start it. And so I was in high school when I started trying to do FBA, um, and there were definitely some learning curves and some kinks along the way. But what I'm trying to get across is that doing something like this very on a very small scale taught me how you know some of the fundamentals of running a business and especially with product photography I don't have to do that anymore however I can tell when something I can tell when a listing looks bad and I can tell when a listing looks good um, for instance if you want to go to my very first take a look at these that I'm showing you right now and then we'll go on to my very first page of listings Look how terrible that looks. And these are all sales, by the way. So, I mean, they still sold looking like that. But you can see the evolution of my photography because here's the very first one, and then it goes to that. And then if you'll look a little further on, oh, yeah, and I also had some very, very dirty um, <laughs> Valentine's Day cards that sold. Those were actually selling for like $5 a piece. Roses are red, violets are blue, let's have sex. Let's just say that my grandma was not thrilled when she found my Etsy shop. But, I mean, all of these sold, so I have no complaints. But you can see that my products evolved, my, you know, skills got better, my designs were better. And I started branching out into, um, you know, different little subcategories. I started making the Disney ones, um, and I was just using old books to do that with. I would cut up old, old books, and I would use scrapbook paper. Um, 
And so you can sell you can sell pretty much anything anything on Etsy as long as it's handmade. I will say that Etsy has really changed since I've been on there. My shop is no longer active, and if I were to get back onto Etsy, I would have to completely relearn these systems because it's it's a different ball game. And a lot of the sellers who have made complaints have said that um, Etsy is allowing pretty much any Chinese manufacturer to go in and sell stuff on Etsy, even though that it's not technically handmade. And I think that what this does is it kind of ruins Etsy's little um, little brand that they've created because Etsy was supposed to be a place where you could go and get something special. And now it's just so far from that. It's just become this marketplace where whatever's trendy and whatever's hot is going to be what's on the front page. So I just wanted to talk about how I've changed so much in the last few years. Um, and this is my uh, all-time sales on Amazon. This is everything I've ever sold on Amazon. So it's thirty-six, a little over $36,000. Um, and I'm very, very happy that my average sale is now way higher than $14. It's now closer to around $18 to $20. So um, it's interesting to look at the data on that and to see how I've evolved over the past few years. Um, and especially just being able to start something from scratch now, I have a lot more confidence on that. And when I started Merch by Amazon, I also had no idea what I was doing. And now I'm seeing a steady growth in sales too. I mean, my first month was around $60. And I think June's is going to be like $360. And July is probably going to break $500 for me in royalties. So I've seen steady growth in that. And as far as making my YouTube channel, I also had no idea what I was doing and, you know, just kind of dived into it. And as you can see in my first couple of videos, I'm very nervous because I, I'm still not comfortable speaking. And I'm a lot less comfortable when the camera is on me versus when I'm just recording my screen. But I've learned to work through that and I've, I'm trying to work on different projects and find different avenues to make money. Um, considering private labeling, considering wholesale, considering um, making some uh, courses online available for people who want to get started. And um, anyone who says that the market is saturated is clearly just not doing their research. Um, of course, on certain products, yeah, you're going to have more competition. But I definitely don't think there's a saturated market, especially when it comes to FBA and Merch by Amazon, because there's so much out there to sell there's so much available so um, I just wanted to make this short little video to let you guys know that it, I was not always doing Amazon FBA I was not always doing merch I was once upon a time a crafter and um, this just shows you that something something like this can teach you some fundamental skills and that if you have a pet project or a side project that you're working on don't you know don't let it go to the wayside you know put some hours in every week to work on something that you love or something that you care about because this used to be something that I was very proud of and I'm still proud of it now but I mean I can tell how I've evolved as a professional because you know to me this is very small scale um, but for someone else you know an extra four thousand dollars a year may mean a big difference to them it may mean the difference in having a newer car or having a vacation or having extra money to go and do things with their friends so I hope that you guys enjoyed this short little story of mine and uh, I would love to know what you think if any of you guys have sold on Etsy or are thinking about selling on Etsy I would love to hear uh, some input from that and uh, also I would want to hear how you got started selling online what was your first venture and um, how how did that go so thanks for watching guys